Hello and welcome to part nine of this walkthrough of L, a mathematical adventure for the BBC Micro. Um, this is the ninth part of this walkthrough and uh, it, this is just too much, isn't it? This is beyond all toleration. There's a walkthrough of a very complicated uh, adventure game on YouTube, um, an adventure game called Quandam, also for the BBC Micro, and it's very good, but um, it's much shorter than this, I believe. I, I don't know how this has ended up in nine parts. Anyway, I, I'm determined to get to the end of this. Or maybe I should just leave this all the rest of it as a cliffhanger for anyone who's masochistic enough to actually watch every single part up to now. Um, as a kind of punishment, I suppose? Uh, that would be quite sadistic of me, so I won't do that. Anyway, welcome to part nine of the walkthrough of this game. Will it ever end? Who knows? Um, we had arrived at the swimming pool, and we had entered the swimming swimming pool, and we had found that there's a small hole there um, at the bottom, which was once covered by a grating and presumably now is not. And we want to try to enter that hole, actually, because there's nothing else to do. And there's a hole, there must be a reason for the hole. Rather like Alice in Wonderland is a kind of rabbit hole, but a hole in a swimming pool without any rabbits. So, in fact, nothing like a rabbit hole at all. So, we want to try and get in there, and or try and see if we can get in there. Now, what we can do, how do we do this? Because if we try to say enter hole, we are told you can't fit through a hole that small. Is there anything we've been carrying all this time that might have helped us. And why Why didn't we drop those bottles? Yes, Darren Izzard, who wrote this walkthrough, why didn't we drop those bottles in the pool room at an appropriate time instead of carrying them around and then having to drop them and pick them up all the time? I don't know, Darren Izzard. Please explain yourself. Uh, no, I'm joking. I'm very grateful to Darren Izzard for the walkthrough, which has made this epic double figures part document uh, documentary um, walkthrough possible. I'm not even making sense or speaking in coherent sentences now. Um, I think I should stop soon. Um, and I will. Anyway, um, yes, we do have some objects that might help us to reduce our size. And we want to be smaller to fit through the hole. So there's a file labeled times 0 0.6, which should reduce us to two thirds or so of our size. So let's drink that, because it could be one of those magical Alice in Wonderland drink me type things, couldn't it? Um, you experience a very, so we drink the file, and well, not the file, but the liquid in the file, obviously. Uh, you experience a very strange sensation as if all the molecules in your body are rearranging themselves. You feel as if you are being closed up like a retractable aerial. Hmm, very nice uh, simile there. You have shrunk to three fifths of your normal height. Of course. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't do basic maths even. Uh, never mind. Uh, the file vanishes into thin air as you drink the last sip. Now, can we enter the hole now? Because we've shrunk ourselves. Uh, you're small enough to fit through the hole, but as it is some distance above the floor of the pool, it is too high for you to reach. So we're too small now, in fact, uh, to clamber into the hole, so we need to drink the liquid in the bottle. You have grown a little. You are now three quarters of your original height, and the bottle has vanished. So we have now adjusted our height, and we're three quarters of our original height. Um, it cursed me, and we can enter the hole now. You're only just tall enough to reach the hole, and it's a very tight squeeze to enter it. You're at one end of a dark tunnel littered with brick rubble. A small opening leads out into the light. The tunnel slopes downwards and is just wide enough for you to crawl along. It just occurs to me that we needed to drink both bottles. And this could have been a more challenging puzzle if the bottles had been located in different places. But in fact, we originally found the bottles, the bottle and the file rather, in the same place. 
so effectively we just drank one after the other and it was no challenge at all. I suppose once again I'm really expecting too much because it's all about the maths and you really need you know need to think about this as a game for children who would have to explain and do the calculations and show their working to explain how times 1.25 and times 0 0.6 are, can be written as fractions and how they get you to three quarters. So silly me. Anyway, we are in a new place now and we're going to go down. We're at the bottom of a dark tunnel. It's quite wide here and there's just enough room to stand up. A rough hole knocked through some stonework leads out into the light. So we're going to exit into the light. You're in a passage with granite walls with a door to the south. A rough hole has been knocked through the stonework at the north end. On one wall there's a wooden notice board with the words No breach of security is too small to ignore. I see. Um, but it has been ignored because there's been a hole there and, and nobody cares it seems. So that's a bit weird. And we're going to try to do this now, unlock door. And we've unlocked it because we have the rusty key, so which we got from the uh, turtle. I failed to mention earlier, by the way, that that uh, story I told about the logo pro programming language which could be used to move a small mechanical electromechanical device around which was connected to the BBC Micro. Uh, I forgot to mention that the device was called a turtle, which is why I went into that whole story in the first place. Um, and why I thought turtle was a reference to the uh, physical turtle device. Anyway, we've unlocked the door that uh, the turtle gave us a key to, and we're going to go in. You're at the bottom of some wooden stairs outside a door which leads north. We're going up. You're on the landing at the top of some wooden stairs. There's a door here. A long strand of red hair is lying on the ground. Now, red hair, what does that mean to us? R Runia, do you remember her from the beginning of this epic quest? Uh, we're here to actually find her and save her, and she had red hair, and the Drogos are scared of red hair. So perhaps if we carry this red hair with us and brandish it whenever and whenever... I've just typed in red hair, which is a foolish thing to do, but um, perhaps if we get the hair and brandish it whenever a Drogo robot guard comes along, we won't need to work out the square root to banish them. But uh, that's possibly wishful thinking. Anyway, we get the red hair. And I actually, I can't explain why we get it. Now I think about it, I don't know what it does. Yes, anyway... Um, we enter the door that is here. And you are in a large circular room beneath a glass dome. Eight identical doors lead to the north, northwest, west, southwest, south, southeast, east, and northeast. An elderly janitor is sitting on a bench in the middle of the room. Well, well, here is a pretty puzzle. Well, it's not a puzzle or pretty yet, is it? We, we, we don't know what's going on. Um, and again, what we do here, we actually have to do this. We have to say, look, janitor, which again is a very awkward construction and isn't grammatical and doesn't make sense. But uh, hey-ho, uh, the janitor is very short-sighted and mistakes you for someone else. That's lucky. Um, oh, it's you, Jimmy, he says. I would keep out of the Kempis room today. There's real trouble this time. They're mad and there's even talk that she's coming. But don't say a word and don't go messing in any of those other rooms. You don't know what the Drogos keep in there. The janitor gets up and hobbles out through one of the doors. So that was an interesting bit of spiel. Um, the real trouble is a she. There's a she that was mentioned who's quite scary, apparently. Uh, will these questions be answered at the end of the game? Um, no. Uh, uh, not all of them, and not many, if any of them. So, But anyway, that's to come, and... There's some information there. Can we act on any of this? It says don't go messing in any of the other rooms, but clearly we have to, otherwise this game would end. What are we to do? We are to go north, because there are rooms in all of the cardinal directions. 
and we have to start somewhere. So, you have walked into a broom cupboard. Oh. Also in the cupboard is a Drogo robot guard with the number 121 emblazoned on his chest. He stands in front of the door blocking your exit. There's a calculator lying on the ground here. Now, the first thing we do, of course, when we encounter Drogo robot guards is to type the square root of the number on their chests to get rid of them. But it doesn't work this time because the guard does not hear you. He seems to be deaf. His robot eye watches you with a cold, unending stare. Hmm. So, because he can't hear us say 11, he doesn't va uh, scream and vanish, uh, whatever it is they do. Um, so it's some sort of sound-activated device that... Uh, a defect in these Drogo robots that uh, defeats them. So he's deaf, so he can't hear us say that. However, we still need to get rid of him because we can't exit the room. The guard's blocking the way. So what are we to do? Well, we are to get the calculator, which is the only other option because uh, it's there. And let us... You see, again, how do we use a calculator? Can we use calc? It doesn't understand. I mean, honestly, how simple can you get? I mean, really, that should be allowed, but it isn't. And what we have to do is we have to try and type 11 to say that we want to type the square root of the number on the Drogo robot guard's chest to get rid of him. And only then are we told the calculator is very old and many of its keys are broken. The only keys which seem to work are 4, 7, minus, multiply, and equals. What we have to do here, boys and girls, is to come up with the number 11 using only these keys on the calculator. Because apparently the Drogo robot guards understand numbers that are written down or displayed on a screen. So why we can't just hold up uh, 11 fingers or 10 fingers and a toe or something, I don't know. But clearly, maybe they can't add up. And maybe maybe, maybe, maybe any, any of various unlikely theories are possible, uh, are true. Um, but in any case, the one that applies here is that we have to use a calculator. And shall I cut a long story short? Because we could we could try various things and get nowhere. Or I could just do this. If you type in 7 minus 4, you obviously get 3. But the guard takes no notice. Uh, what you can then do is um, type multiply by 4 and then take away 7. And you get 5. 12, take, 12 takes 7. Uh, the guard still takes no notice because, of course, 5 isn't 11. What you then do is this incredible thing, which is times 7, minus 4, minus 4, minus 4, minus 4, minus 4, minus 4. And you get 11. And the guard gives a shriek of terror, smashes the calculator into tiny fragments, and rushes out through the door. And that, you know, is a quite clever little puzzle, I think. Um, it's quite neat, and I'm pleased with it. And there are, there are different solutions, and there may be a shorter solution, in fact, to that puzzle. Although I'm not sure about that, and I couldn't prove it. But in any case, we've done it. We've got rid of the guard, so we can now leave that room. And of course there was no point to that except to get rid of the card and play that game. Uh, and should I be complaining about these things? Should I be complaining about uh, verisimilitude? Um, about narrative? About the lack of narrative? Should I really? Because after all, if this is a tribute to the original adventure, there wasn't much narrative there either. And at that point, and on that note, I shall pause again and see you, see you in the next part of this epic playthrough.